Are you trying to play Valorant on your ROG Allies gamepad, but your shots aren't registering? What about mouse and keyboard? Are your inputs lagging as shown here? If so, don't worry. I'll teach you how to fix these issues, so keep on watching to find out how to do it. How's it going, guys? Today we will be going over some things in Valorant which include how to configure your gamepad to reliably register the shots, how to fix the input delay when playing on a keyboard, some benchmarks, and more. We'll first take a look at how to configure our gamepad. So with that being said, let's get started. Before we get started, make sure you configure your Valorant to run in keyboard and mouse mode. This game doesn't support controller natively, so you'll have to run it with this template. I'll be going to the firing range to show you the issue I ran into with the default mouse and keyboard settings. Then I'll show you how to resolve this issue with a few minor tweaks. As you can see, I'm spamming the right trigger, but only some of my shots are registering. The same thing happens with the left trigger as well, but I didn't record it in this video. So to resolve this, we're going to have to add a secondary way to fire and ADS our weapon. I'll be configuring all my other buttons as well. I'll be right back. A few moments later. Okay, I'm back. These are the settings I configured. I left everything as default except everything that's marked in red or green. Feel free to pause the video and copy my settings. With that out of the way, let's go back and test these keys out. Left bumper and right bumper are used to cycle through weapons and are the default settings. As you can hear from the loud audible click, for these four abilities below, I configured it to use M1 or M2 combined with XYB or A. So for those who aren't aware, you can actually configure any of the ROG ally buttons as a secondary key. Just think of it as the function key on a laptop. For the left stick click, by default, it is configured to shift, which allows you to walk. I configured it as a toggle in the settings so that I don't have to hold onto it as I move. B by default opens up the main menu, so I changed it to left control, which is crouching. I also enabled toggle crouch in the settings so I don't have to hold onto it as I move. I assigned the select button to B, which opens the by menu. I don't remember what the original function was. Alrighty, now that we have our keys configured, I'm going to test the left and right triggers on some dummies now. As you can see, all of our shots are now registering now that we added a secondary button to our left and right triggers. Would I recommend you do this though? That depends. If you like a challenge and want to play this on the go, then yes. If you don't like getting owned and flamed in pubs, then no, don't do it. Well, maybe in deathmatch, it's okay. With that being said, I'm now going to show you how to fix the keyboard delay issue. But first let me show you what that issue even looks like. As you can see, whenever I simultaneously move and click at the same time, the moment I let go of the keyboard, I'm still moving. As you can see, this is definitely unplayable, so I'm going to teach you how to fix it. To fix this issue, first I want you to go to the Windows search bar and search up services. Once you've selected services, locate Armory Crate SE and disable the service. Make sure you lock in your wattage settings, such as performance, turbo, and manual mode before you end the service though. You won't have access to it once the service is stopped. You'll have to do this every time unless you uninstall Armory Crate and find a replacement software such as G-Helper, but of course there are compromises with that as well. Once the service is stopped, let's go back and check if we still have any input lag. As you can see, the moment I let go of the keys on the keyboard, 
I am no longer moving after letting go. Now that we got the gamepad and keyboard issue resolved, let's now compare the VRAM settings in 3, 4, 6, and 8 gigabytes. If you want to follow along and compare your settings, go to the practice menu and select Spike Diffuse. From there, head over to this corner and point your crosshair at the upper portion of this barrel and try to keep it placed at the halfway point between the left and right end of the barrel. If you're wondering why I chose these values, I chose 3 gigabytes because this game only requires 3 and 1080p. As for 4 and 8, it's readily available for the average user without accessing the BIOS. And for 6, I feel like 6 is the sweet spot for most games, and it's what I've been using as of late. Also, this was recorded with OBS, so the performance tanked pretty hard. For 15 watts at 6 gigabytes of VRAM, the average FPS went from 175 to 135. So the numbers that you see here on this screen won't be the same numbers you'll see in person. Um, anyways, if you look closely, 3 gigs of VRAM is a bit unstable, and dips randomly and runs at 61 to 62 degrees. At 4 gigs, the FPS is stable, and the temps run at around 61 to 62 as well. At 6 gigs, we run at a stable FPS while running at a cool 58 degrees. As for 8 gigs, don't even bother. The FPS is absolute dog water. With that being said, let's test out this game with some manual TDP. In case you don't know how to configure manual TDP, open up Armory Crate. Select Settings. Select Operating Mode. Select Manual at the top right, and you should be able to add in your own manual TDP. I have manual TDP from 7 watts all the way to 30 watts. But anyways, to create your own profile, click on the three dots and click Create New. From here, you can rename your profile, adjust your SPL, SPPT, and FPPT settings. SPL is the bare minimum power you want. SPPT is a boost that lasts two minutes, and FPPT is a boost that lasts about 10 seconds when needed. Below this, you can also adjust the fan curves. There are already three pre-made fan curves for each of the fans. Adjust your settings to your liking and make sure to hit the check mark at the top to apply. You'll get a warning, but just click yes. Once you have your manual TDP profile created, make sure to enable it and select it with the left side toggle. You can only toggle to your most current manual TDP profile, so make sure you select the one that fits your needs and hit the check mark. With that being said, let's take a look at some of our findings with manual TDP. From this chart, there were some interesting results. First, the leap from 10 watts to 11 watts was a 30 FPS gain. That's insane. The leap from 11 watts to 12 watts was about 15 FPS, which is respectable. 12 to 13 were negligible, and the leap from 13 to 14 was a whopping 18 FPS. From 14 to 15 was a 10 FPS gain, and from 16 to 17 was about a 13 FPS gain. Overall, though, everything above 17 watts had significant diminishing returns, and if I had to choose a TDP to play Valorant, it would probably be 16 or 17 if you're looking to stay at 120 frames and above. With that being said, I had a personal request of testing this game on an external monitor in both 1080p and 1440p, so let's go and do that. So I currently have my ROG Ally unplugged and without OBS running. As I said before, OBS tanks the performance hard. I'm going to plug in my monitor now to see if it tanks the FPS now. It looks like the performance tanked about 15 FPS, but I don't think it should have dropped this much. I'll restart the game to see if I get better results. All right, I'm back and readjusted my camera settings. As you can see, we're back at the FPS that we should have been at. So if you were planning to plug in your monitor to your ROG ally, make sure to exit the game before you do it. With that being said, let's see how well this game runs at 1440p. After I close out the game, of course. I don't know if you guys can see, but I am running at 1440p. The FPS is running at around 150 FPS, which is pretty respectable. But keep in mind there's no action going on, so it might run closer to 100-ish to 110 frames. Also because my USB hub doesn't support more than 60 Hz, this wouldn't do anything for me unless I find an adapter or hub that supports 120 Hz and above. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm now going to show you some gameplay footage at 1080p without OBS running. Also be gentle, I have feelings. Well, maybe you can tease a bit, but don't go too far. This is my first time playing Valorant, and because I'm playing on a tiny screen, it's hard to place my cursor for headshots. Anyways, let's get right into the footage.
it, but probably best to play as a team. So, uh, Fight. what's the plan? Keep up. remaining.
remaining. So there you have it. For the most part, the FPS stayed fairly close to 120 frames. If you wanted a teeny bit more, just crank it to 16 or 17. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you found this video useful, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this with your friends. Also, don't be afraid to ask questions and leave comments below. In fact, I made this video because a user requested to make it. Anyways, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.